Hello, I'm back. Okay, so today we'll be discussing valine. This is one of the non-polar amino acids, meaning it's hydrophobic and it's aliphatic. If you don't know what that means, visit my alanine video. I think it's that one because I explained it in there. And finally, this is one of the three branched amino acids. You can see the side chain here. The central carbon is going to be right here. And here is the side chain branches off and it has two methyl compounds. And here are the three branched amino acids. Valine, leucine, isoleucine. So you can see here on their side chains, I erased the CH from earlier. You can see that they all have these little branch parts at the end, and these amino acids are all essential, meaning that we can't synthesize them in our bodies. We need to get them from our diet, and they're only synthesized in plants. So eat your veggies, kids. Other important things about valine. It helps muscle growth and tissue repair, which is also why it's important for regenerating stem cells. So... If you want to get buff, you got to eat protein so you can get valine and other amino acids that help promote your body's repair. Valine also plays a role in sickle cell anemia. You know, the disease where normal red blood cells, which should be disc shaped, like kind of like this, become sickle shaped. And they're all curved and weird. This is because the primary protein, hemoglobin, which is the one that transports oxygen into your blood, hemoglobin has four subunits. And there's two types of subunits. There's two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. Now within the beta subunit, there is a specific area that contains glutamic acid. Now, glutamic acid is polar, unlike valine, and it is negatively charged. But in sickle cell anemia, a single base change, which causes an amino acid change, causes the glutamic acid to become valine. And this screws up all the protein folding because valine is nonpolar, unlike glutamic acid. And if glutamic acid is negative, then it could possibly attract other positively charged amino acids and cause protein folding. However, if it's nonpolar, these interactions can't happen. And these hemoglobins become weird and misformed, and they end up forming these long chains of hemoglobin, just like all tied up against each other, when hemoglobin is normally not supposed to do that. It's actually called a globular protein, which means it's meant to look more sphere-like. So this long connection of hemoglobins isn't very helpful for maintaining this rounded red blood cell shape. So instead, these chains of hemoglobin stretch the red blood cell. And this sickle shape actually is really bad for arteries, especially in capillaries, where it's super thin. You want it to be able to flow nicely through like this. So it's best for the red blood cells to be circular. However, if they're if they're sickle shaped, they can easily clog each other up and clog up the arteries. And that's why sickle cell anemia is such a dangerous disease. So yeah, valine is useful in a lot of other terms, but in this specific amino acid slot, it should not go there. And that just comes to show you how dangerous a single amino acid change can be for an entire individual. A single amino acid change causes the entire protein to fall apart and it causes the red blood cell to be sickle shaped. And that in turn causes the arteries to clog up. And if the arteries are clogged up, the oxygen can't get to the different tissues in the body properly. So one single molecular change can actually affect the whole body in a multitude of ways. And that's why everything in the body is so interconnected. If one thing goes wrong, like a bunch of other things just go wrong. So uh, yeah, that's valine.